What's up, everybody? Brian here. Uh, today we are going to tie a super cool pattern. Whoops. Called strong arm crab. Sometimes called strong arm merkin crab. Um, super popular for permit, but um, also useful. I mean, anything that eats crustacean, useful for redfish, snook will eat them, trout, sea trout that is. Um, but up here, where we are in New England, um, we do a lot of fishing for striped bass on the flats, and um, they love fly patterns like this. Like here's another one in a sort of white tan. Um, that works better on that sort of white sand situation. But um, anyhow, let's get going. Um, this pattern looks complicated. It's really not. Um, fairly simple. Um, you are going to want to brush. If you don't have one of these tools, you can use a um, nice trick as a piece of Velcro, the, 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 not the soft side, but the hook side, cut a small little strip. And we're gonna use this to really pick the yarn apart. Um, the, the crab bodies are made of a, of a um, yarn material we call sparkle yarn. And um, you, we're gonna need to sort of uh, uh, pick that apart a bit. So let's get going. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is get our hook and our vise. Uh, and get our tying thread secured uh, onto our hook. Come back a little bit. And then we're gonna get our eyes going. Or excuse me, not really our eyes, I guess, in this case. Really more just a, just a weight is really the only purpose for these dumbbells. And these are gonna go on. I'm gonna move my hand out of the way in a second so you're gonna see this. Um, whoops, there it goes on the ground. We're gonna try that one again. I'm gonna go nice and loose over the top. Gotcha. And then come back around and we're basically gonna be making an X pattern, okay? So these are gonna sit just behind the, the eye of the hook, like so. And how we're gonna tie these on, they're on very loosely right now and I'm just gonna come over the top this way, around the bottom, over the top opposite. Okay, so now I'm basically crisscrossing on top of those every single time. Like so. Pretty firm amount of pressure. Uh, because once these are on, we really don't want them moving around or anything. So. And then now I'll wrap a few in the front here just to really lock it in. Come back behind them, same thing, and now we're locked in. Now we're gonna take our thread and we're gonna come way back on the hook. We're gonna really come up the bend. Just about. That seems pretty good. And we're going to take our chenille, um, which is the stuff that <laughs> in the package that looks like a San Juan worm, uh, this stuff. And we're going to tie an overhand knot in it, like so. And then you can clip the loop. So you're making little, little claws. So you're going to take it. Make a loop, tie that knot, clip it, you're good to go. A little trick here, grab a lighter, singe the ends. Now you've got some pointy little claws there. And we're just gonna tie this in. So this thing is basically going to, the, the arm and the claw is gonna face up and away from the from the sort of the direction the fly is gonna get pulled. So we're gonna position this so it's really 
hanging off the back of that hook. I don't know, whatever that is, an inch or so. And then we can start tying that right in. A little bit loose at first, get it positioned. And then we can really tie that in. We don't need all that excess up top, so I'm gonna clip that out. All that's gonna all that's gonna get covered anyway. Like so. Alright, so now we got our our strong arm is is in. And we're gonna take a little bit of green dubbing from the pack. Make ourselves a little noodle. Doesn't have to be very thick. Let my fingers a little bit get that on there. Okay, and we're just gonna come around and just kind of cover up this hook bend area. I'm gonna try to keep my claw straight in there. We're gonna cover this zone right there. Whoops. With some of this dubbing. And that's gonna help us kind of camouflage the rest of our materials. Then we're going to take our uh, one of our hackle feathers, one of these olive hackles, um, and you see there's a difference here. There's these kind of fine uh, feathers up at the top. Um, we don't really want those. We want this this sort of bushy stuff at the bottom that looks like turkey marabou, actually. And um, we're going to grab the stem and just pinch off a pretty good clump of this stuff like so. And I'm going to take this in two parts. We're going to put a little clump of this here up on this side of the hook. I'm just going to tie that, that in. I'm going to turn our vise over. And now we're gonna put some eyes in on this side. Go with the black eyes. Got some eyes in your pack. She can probably do it up top here. And these are gonna kind of bug out from the back of the, you know, I guess the front of the crab, but the back of our fly. Something, I don't know what we're doing here. Yeah, we'll do them on this side. Look a little better. Something like so. Pull them in just a smidge. So we'll just get a couple loose wraps on that. Make sure we have them where we like them. Pull those in just a smidge. can tie down quite hard on those get those locked in and of course we don't need this so that come on scissors there we go that's gone all right and now we're gonna take our other clump of um, on the bottom of that hackle there. And we're going to put that around this side of the fly. Be careful of that hook point. That thing is sharp. It keeps getting me. Okay. Like so. All right, we're gonna leave our thread there. So now we have something that should look like this. All right, now we're gonna start tying our sparkle yarn in. 
And to do that, we're gonna have our fly positioned with the, uh, with the weight up, so on top of the hook eye here. And you can lick your fingers and just kind of wet this stuff, and it's just gonna help keep it under control while we're doing this. Take your first color. In this case, we're gonna go tan, then olive, and kind of every other, um, probably about five sections or so till we get to the, the weight up top. We're just gonna go very loosely just to get it on. I know I'm covering it, I'm sorry. Now we're on, slide that back. And now we can really lock this sucker in. By just creating that same X pattern that we made up front. All right, and then we can kind of cinch it down like that. And we'll take an olive piece and repeat. Now, we're gonna take some legs, some of our rubber legs. You can use whatever color you want, really, and that's in the bag. There's this kind of like green fleck color, and then there's a um, yellow and orange barred color. We can use the green one, but you can use whatever you like. Um, a hot, there's different ways to do this. Some people will wrap, wrap it around the thread, tie it in. I think the best way to keep it all under control is come under, the hook, just tie a simple overhand knot. You don't have to crank it, you're not tying it super tight, just to get it sitting on there. And get the legs generally positioned where you want them to be, which is coming straight out to the side. Hold everything back a little bit and go very loosely over, very loosely. And come forward and then tighten down where you put that knot of the rubber material. And now those legs are in, okay? Very, very simple. So now we're just rinsing and repeating until we get to the front. We're gonna go every other on our color of body material. Um, and once we get our bod body material in, we're gonna do another leg, next body material, next leg. So we're gonna do the legs three times. We're gonna have three sets of legs. And then after our last set of legs, we're gonna put our last piece of sparkle yarn in, and then we're gonna wrap it up. So. This part might be fast forwarded through the video because it's just repeating everything we just did. Um, but that's all we're doing is every other adding the legs and we're going, but we'll keep rocking and rolling here.
on some of these. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six sections of yarn in there. Um, obviously, we're gonna, we still have a little work to do on this fly. We've got to tease all this out. Um, it's not gonna look at all like it was ever yarn uh, when we're done with it. Um, but to finish this off, we can just wrap several times behind the eyes to lock all that stuff that we just put in. We're gonna lock that down. I'm gonna do a few more X crosses over our eyes. It keeps calling them eyes. They're not eyes in this fly. It's just a weight that looks like eyes. Same thing over front. Really. Wrap that down, build up a bit of a thread base. Now we can start teasing this yarn out. So we want to be careful not to clip any of our um, legs. We can certainly clip, trim down this yarn, these yarn um, pieces. Um, this body of this crab is going to be roughly the size of a quarter, maybe a little less. So that's how you can sort of start shaping it. Okay, and now we can start picking it apart. And first we can use our bodkin to really unravel these. Like so, so we can brush it. That's just about gonna do it. We get our legs moving in the right direction. Actually, we can trim these legs a wee bit. Just a smidge. Dude, dude. Probably took a little too much off of those. Yeah, I would have left them a little bit longer, but that's okay. Uh, last thing to do with our strong arm crab here, flip it, is we can take a, actually take it out of the jaws, we can take a red permanent marker or brown, black, whatever, it really doesn't matter. And just give a little bit of life To our claw. But there you have it. You strong arm crab. Let us know how you do with these things. This is going to be a fun one to fish for sure.